Hello, peeps and geeks, and welcome to, I believe, episode nine, is that true, of The Other Side of Cyber, where we talk about the human element of cyber and what it means to participate in all these amazing things online. I'm JJ, Jacqueline Jane, coming to you live from Australia, and on the other side of the world, we have James Azar. Where are you calling us from today, James? You know, if I was calling, I'd be on the phone. But since we're streaming, I'm from okay, Atlanta, where, Georgia. Where are you streaming you, from today? I'm streaming from the uh, uh, beautiful place called um, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Nice. Uh, Atlanta. The, the, the southeast of the Uni these United States of America. Very nice, very nice. And today we are talking about something that, I tell you what, this topic continues to pop up. It is clearly something we need to be talking about more. Uh, we're not going to be able to cover it all in one episode. We know that. However, it is important that we talk to you about it today. And that is the, the tough element of parenting uh, with kids online, how to keep them safe, whether they be the little ones in primary school all the way through to high school. I suppose we've got to look at it till when they're adults and they can start to make their own decisions. So James, tell us what is it that you think is the most critical element and why this is so important at the moment? So a few things before we get started on today's episode. Just want to kind of get some um, um, house uh, cleaning stuff in order. One, we are live on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So if you're tuning in and watching us live, please make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and share today's podcast. If you're <laughs> listening after the fact on your favorite podcast listening platform, which we will be posting all nine episodes simultaneously next week for you guys all to enjoy and binge on the show Yes. Um, you can also please make sure to give us a five star review. Now, something very cool about today's show is if you comment, bring on screen, we feature your comments, we give you a shout out. Our format 30 minutes of our just kind of online banter, and then the last 30 minutes of the show, we do a ton of QA and we really kind of uh let the show kind of take its own direction. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, parenting in the era of what I like to call the dirty ocean of the internet. The dirty ocean of the internet. Wow. You ever gone to like a dirty beach? Yeah. Well, not many in Australia, let me tell you. No, not many in Australia. I'll agree to that. But there are some. Yeah, there are some. Especially like the really public ones where, you know, you get the ungrateful uh, tourists who really yep. don't value um, cleanliness per se. So um, something very interesting to me is I compare the Internet to that. So when we take our kid to a uh, private remote beach that doesn't have a lot of people, we tend to be a bit looser with our children. Yeah, because we know that there's no one around. We know that we can see them. They're contained. There's an element of trust in the environment. Okay, yep, yeah. yeah, I get it. A good and, analogy. I like it. And the internet is like going to like the dirtiest tourist beach on the planet where every – second step you take on the sands got some like plastic bottle or some tin can of sorts or a wrapper for something or just food um the water's dirty with you know plastics and 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 all kinds of stuff and you're just is there people everywhere i'm getting a picture so yeah and it's people, people everywhere and it's one person next to the other um, very uncovid, you know, kind of like yes. friendly. I guess that's a new term now. Um, and we as parents then are very paranoid about our kids because yeah. it's very easy for them to get lost. It's like, you know, it's very funny if the image I could draw in your face is think of like a beach in like China compared to like a beach in Southern California. So I do, I get it, and it's a really good analogy because. In that situation, we want to have our kids right in front of us. If they're little, we want to hold them up so they don't step on something to maybe cut themselves or, you know, we don't want them to fall over in rubbish or we don't want them to get lost. So we, we probably tend to want to hold them 
and not let them enjoy the beach because we can't actually have any control over the environment, what's going on, their safety, nothing. It's a really good analogy, and that is what the internet is. The internet's a very, very challenging place. And for a lot of parents who I want to say are technologically able, but not adaptable. So there's a big difference, right? Between I think what we expect of parents and how difficult it is for a parent to um, really monitor their kids online. Yep. Because we as parents kind of have we want to do the opposite of what our parents did yeah. in a way. But our parents didn't have the internet, so we're really true. We're leading the way there. Yeah, but we're leading the way in the fact that we were the early adapters of the internet. We adapted the internet. We see the perks, benefits, and downfalls of it, and yet we realize that it's the future. Yep. And we quite haven't found the right balance between being online to doing stuff normally. Well, we're hyper-connected. If you think about um, even just the speed of how things have happened in the world of cyber, if we look at, let's use cars for a a side-by-side analysis. You look at when the first car came out, And you look about how long it took for that car to move on in its next models, become faster, and all of that development over the last however many years, now we have some really fast cars Mm -hmm. and now we have electric cars and, you know, it's just moving in that, um, that way for cars. But that's happened over a lot of years. So we had time to adapt. We had time to change the laws for seat belts. We had time to put more infrastructure to, to sort with that and to, to deal with all of that. Whereas the internet has gone, whilst not overnight, but the connectivity seems to be on an exponential growth phase. And because of that, no one's really thought, hold on a minute, what are the guidelines? What do we need to know? How do we keep it safe? Because it is not everyone could have a car back in the day and not everyone could have a Lamborghini today. But the equivalent is everyone's got a Lamborghini in the internet world. As soon as you're on the internet, you've got it all. So that's a really interesting brain analogy from my brain. I hope that makes sense of to why we're in the predicament we're in. We don't really understand what, what it is. It's so, biz, it's so big. Yeah, that's a great point. I think we're we're kind of in a in a place where we, we, our schools today even, you know, hand your kids um, internet-connected devices, expect yep. stuff to be done online, but the school isn't really teaching the kids about online behavior. So no. very, very, very interesting. I, I don't know if you had, you had this experience in Australia, but I remember when I was in uh, preschool, um, one of the first things we learned was – the rules of the parking lot and the crosswalk. Yep. Right? We have a cat appearance on today's show. So this that's is always, Fergus. Fergus yeah. McCossy pants. <laughs> our, our first cat appearance, folks, um, <laughs> for today's episode. Exactly. And He's got lots cat- to say. So, yeah, yeah. When we continue because that's a good point. At school, so so you, le- you learn, we learned parking lot safety, um, crosswalk safety, you don't cross the street until, you know, the, all the cars are stopped and you've looked both ways. And when you're crossing the street, you're crossing the street with purpose very quickly. Don't slow down. Um, beware that some cars may not be able to see you. And so yep. as you pass cars, ensure that you're looking across the street to see that no car is coming because, well, some people are just a-holes and, you know, uh, operate in a specific way, but but it's it's a it's a very um, noble concept, I think, because it's a it's a concept of um, of of teaching kids how to behave um, in a very dangerous situation, which is kid versus car. We kind of know the outcome of that, yeah. But we're not Even teaching we, kids versus internet. Yeah, but there's nothing. There's no. Um, how do you put it? You you are familiar with cars. 
Like you have that understanding. When you learn to ride a bike, you're taught about the, the road rules and you become aware of cars. You're not a driver yet because you're still a kid. And then you learn a bit more, training wheels come off, and then you, you know, you're riding a bigger bike and you need to understand the road rules because you're not on the footpath, you're on the road now, so there are different rules to follow. And then when you want to get your license, you get the book, you have to study the rules first. And it takes quite a journey until you literally get the keys. Like you pointed out last week in our episode, James, I don't know if it was here or on Clubhouse, I, th- I can't remember, but you don't just give the 16-year-old who's starting to drive the keys and say, off you go. You just don't. Or even if they're 14, you don't. Not when they're 11. And that's what we're doing here. We're saying, here's the Lamborghini being, here's your connectivity onto the interwebs. Off you go. Without any guidelines, without any structure, without any, um, there's been no time frame. They sort of get everything at the same time rather than bits and pieces based on age or mental capacity understanding we just don't do that online and now we find ourselves in a situation that a topic like this is so important and so popular every time i talk about it people want to know more they parents intelligent people just don't get it and it's not because they don't want to it's they actually don't know how to and Whilst that might seem a bit odd, not everyone's curious. Not everyone will say, how do I stay safe online into Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever your chosen search engine might be. And I think that's the issue. There's no guidelines anywhere about how to take your kids through this journey. When we look at traffic and cars and driving, there's clear guidelines from when you're very little. These days, it doesn't happen online. Yeah, I think, but, but but that's a that's a really great um, point that you bring up, JJ. Which is, we're not really um, going through and auditing um, what our kids see online, and we, no. you know, it's it's part of the um, hyper sexualization of children today. Yep. Right. I mean, that th- that's really a direct product of the internet and social media platforms and if we start to talk about parenting your kids right because we don't just want to highlight the challenges which i think there's many and uh if if we did that we can probably do a you know a a 48 hour live stream marathon of just talking about all the challenges but let's 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 start talking about children at a very very young age yep Right, because I think let's let's start with there, and and as we go through today's episode and possibly the next several episodes of the show, we'll 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 reach all the way to teenage years, right? But everything starts at the foundation. So something very interesting um, in a study I've been pitching several universities to do is take forty pregnant women, yep. put them in a control group, give twenty of them just books and newspapers and traditional old school media and give 20 of them just smart devices. Yep. And then observe the kids over their two years. I firmly believe the reason some of the kids that are born today are so uh, quickly adaptable to technology is because it's really, really kind of put in their head by the mom when yep. she's pregnant. Yeah, when they're in the womb. But it's true. That's evolution. That's, you know, we didn't know how to do certain things. And then we learn that. And then the next generation seems to be more natural at doing it. And then it gets refined as more generations come along. So, you know, for you and I, James. We as parents look at that. And I have friends who I will not name because I still want to keep them as friends. (laughs) Um, Who will be like, look at my kid. Uh, nine months old and already knows how to hang up a FaceTime call and already knows how to use the phone and it's a natural and uh, two years the kids like on the phone playing games and just you know like you and, and, and I look at those parents and I'm not judging but I'm judging right <laughs> like well, I'm like well, I don't even uh, know if it's if it's you have knowledge about what that might be doing, you know, the little Einstein thing and download the app and get your kids involved and all that type of stuff. The When you have the knowledge and the awareness of what the potential downside is of that, 
That's the difference. You and I have that because we've, we've done the background. So we know it, it's no different to parents who think um, um, like it's okay for their kids to ride around without helmets on. It, you know, what could go wrong? It's having the understanding of the, the issues that we actually are dealing with now. And I know we'll talk about this in the future, but there's a, a, an epidemic going on with um, teenagers with consent and with addiction to porn and the issues that that's bringing. That's been going on now for maybe five to eight years and we're seeing the fruits of all of those um, early adopters, and I say this in loose terms, but early adopters for those things they should not be seeing online, we're seeing the result of that now with all of this explosion of the behaviour going on online with teenagers because of their ability to be able to access this really early. So it's not a matter of the teenagers are doing it now, it's for the last five to eight years, it's been continuously going on. So what we're seeing now with parents, like what do I do? The internet's been around for a long time, but there seems to be more evidence now that this is a, having a negative effect on our kids. And while some people would have predicted it back then, because we have some evidence, it's our role, and I know you agree with this, we need to bring it to everybody and say, this is what's going on. You need to be aware of it. And whilst it's fantastic, your kid at nine months can do that, it's actually not good for their brains. So here's some information to help you and hopefully they move past it and don't think that that's the way to go because that's the problem we face. Parents think it's a good thing and it isn't. Well, I think the part of it is parenting is a very, very difficult job, right? It's a full-time yeah. job. Yeah. And you got to do that and do everything else. Um and then and that, that that's a very uh, that's a, that's a challenge for a lot of people, and and yep. rightfully so because if parenting was easy, then you know, Lord knows it'd be it'd be simple, but it's not. Yeah. And that kind of brings us into the idea of of young kids, you know, with these baby Einstein apps and um, the conditioning of a child um, on on these devices. It is. It's it's literally um, destroying their critical thinking abilities. Yep. And that's that's shown if you look at the generation of teenagers now, they're unable to discern and hunt for information because of that. Yep. Right. And so, you know, my idea of the study and the experiment is is as you watch kids go grow with parents who read. And then the kids only introduced to books. Those children are going to be able to discern and learn um, more than per se someone who's just on their phone. And and Sylvina here says, "Damn right." Um, <laughs> oh, <that's> <laughs> I'm guessing she was agreeing with what you said, um, yep. JJ. So Sylvana's coming all the way from Perth, Western Australia. You know that's a, that, that that's a great place in Austra that's a great little place in Australia. There's a US oh. naval base I believe in Perth. Yes, um, there is. Yes, there is. So what do we do? What do we should we look at um, and just a reminder folks that the first 30 minutes of which we have about 10 minutes left is our podcast element of what we do as well as our live show which we're very grateful for you all to be here and then after that we spend another 30 minutes answering your questions reading your comments and debating whatever might pop into our heads which can be very very interesting let me tell you so to everyone who is tuned into the other side of cyber we're really happy that you're here remember to subscribe and i believe our podcasts will be out on our favorite podcast places in the coming next weeks week. which is very next week very exciting week. yeah um, so what about if we start with mm -hmm. the kids let's start let's do this in age groups james so yeah so, so, so silvana brings up something quite great which is i grew up on books we have those here's uh if you take a look at my background books you take a look at jj's background books um and I, i'm a firm believer in books now that doesn't mean that i don't watch tv because i do that doesn't mean that i don't use the internet i do uh but i'm trying to wean myself off the internet which is very very difficult 
Look, it is. Um, and the interesting thing with books, and this is why I love technology so much, is I have the book and I have the audio, audible, so the audio version of the book, and I have it as a PDF or on my Kindle, whichever you know terminology you prefer. So I actually like to have all three versions of the book because sometimes I actually want to hold the book other times I want to flick through it and the, you know, the um, electronic device is a great way to do it and other times I want to listen to it. And that's just me. Not everybody does, but you need to understand the value of those three different elements, not just rely on going straight to the movie rather than reading the book, for example. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with what you just said and I'll up it a minute. So... Okay. Over the last month, I've been very suspicious of digital books on Kindle and audiobooks, simply what? because of some of the um, books that are being taken offline. Um, even though you buy it and you own it, um, Amazon's removed a, a bunch of books that didn't fit the narrative that Amazon wants, kind of a modern day book burning thing. I did and not so know that. I now buy all my books. I no longer buy from Amazon either. I found local bookstores here yeah. in my area and I go to the local bookstore and I'll buy, um, you know, a handful of books and I come home and, and, and I use, and I read them. And I was telling JJ before the show started, someone yesterday sent me a book they had written. Um, so um, like I enjoy having a physical book and I think that, um, you know, books have value in their in their printed format on, on on paperback. I think that's you're able to take notes that way, which I'm a big note taker and highlight stuff in a book. Put the um, tabs in the post-it notes, fold the things down. Yeah, um, put it in. You know, when you're on an airplane, I see the people who are on Kindles and I see the people who are on actual books. So I put in a headset and I'll listen to music with an with an actual book, and I love the smell of a book. I love oh. the smell of a book. There's, there's you know, one of my favorite things to do is to go into a book bookstore, especially some of the um, privately owned ones where there's that ambiance, there's something there and that smell and picking up that book and just flick, flick, flick that, oh, there is something, I don't know what it is, something magical about that. And I could literally lose myself for two hours in a bookshop just having a look and I'll buy one or two I love it. And I don't think it's going anywhere. And I don't think that kids these days have lost that. I think it's finding that balance. Yeah. Like everything I'm, I'm, in life, the I'm, balance. I'm, I'm a firm believer of small bookstores, so I don't visit book chains. Like in the U.S., we have Barnes & Noble. My, my foot does not – I don't step foot in their store. Um, one, because they have Starbucks inside, and I think that's just over-commercialization of really bad coffee. And as a coffee snob – I have well, that's why you love Melbourne so much. Yes, because Melbourne is a very, um, very uh, lovely place where people are. Um, it's it's very small business and community driven. Different and parts coffee, of it. Bloody yeah, good. Great, great coffee shops. Great coffee. I mean, look, most places in Silvana will um, agree with this. Most places in Australia have really good coffee. And when you go to America, you're just desperate to find anything local that isn't Starbucks because it's just we don't like it. We just don't like it. And as per usual, James, we've gone on on a weird tangent and ended up on coffee. So let's bring it back, which is not easy to do, and talk about the little kids, so the toddlers, the preschool kids, the ones that have not gone to school oh, yet. So what do we do here? So, so it's something very interesting where I think that the limitation, um, a bunch of studies have shown that limiting those kids to maybe 15 minutes a day on, a, on, on the internet and on a device is probably the healthiest thing you can do for their brain development. Yeah. In fact, some of the studies I've read uh, from some of the leading researchers in, 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 in pediatrics talk about, you know, try not to introduce any smart devices to your kid until they're at least five years old. Well, that's Meaning, just not happening. Well, it, but but it could happen. Meaning, it, 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 th there are ways where where you can introduce them to it um, through limited periods of time, maybe fifteen minutes every other day. Um, focus more on actual interactions, um, and then you know, very interesting. We kind of had this discussion on Clubhouse on Monday night. Um, but 
have them understand that the internet is really kind of a place for work and not for life. And the difference for that is significant from a mindset. When you look at the internet or your computer as a work tool, you're less likely to engage with it for entertainment. You're going to look for entertainment elsewhere. And that's very true when you talk to like, you know, uh, friends of mine who are uh, engineers and developers and and architects um, from from a software and, and perspective, right? These guys spend 10, 12 hours a day on their computers. So always, I'm always very curious to ask them, especially in the COVID era where, you know, they work from home, so their commute's been cut out. So now they don't longer have that, you know, hour to hour and a half or two hours of just behind the wheel in the car looking around they don't have that so i've asked them that and it's been it's been very 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 it's been very fascinating for me to actually hear their feedback because their feedback has been unbelievable so what they tell me is they enjoy reading they love reading right and um they spend time doing that but also, and I think even, even more significantly is when they get home, they try not to even turn on their computers. So yeah. they're, they're very focused on uh, reading books or magazines or listening to music or just um, getting the visual part off. But what so about, that, you just said something then and it triggered a, a thought. Kids these days have the dvds or the the ipad devices set up in the cars now from babies so they're not even looking at the world you get on a bus these days or a train and everyone's got their head down and i remember the conversation with my son when he was you know aware of the car and aware of having his ipod at the time ipod touch can i use it in the car mommy i said no look around see what's going on pay attention it's that's how you learn uh, your surroundings. And even from that very young age, I think parents, and I've been guilty of it myself, have used those devices as a babysitting tool, a tool because you've got other things to do. So it's to occupy your child because our worlds are so busy. We should have really, and now COVID has in an odd way given us an opportunity to go to slow mode again and maybe make a difference here and say, no, to your point, James, let's not use the technology like we used to. Let's understand what it is, give it boundaries. People understand then, okay, so when I actually use technology, rather than it being an extension of my arm, it is a thought and a choice that I make that takes me away from something more valuable. And that's my ideal situation. I love that ideal situation. I know we're almost out of time, so I don't want to leave our listeners without any um takeaways. So I kind of want to spend the next few minutes really focused on some of the takeaways that we can do. So from a, let, let's address this from a toddler perspective. One, limit the amount of screen time. A lot of research yeah. suggests no more than 15 minutes a day and n- not on um, traditional games or YouTube, but rather more on brain teasers yep. that are more interactive that help develop motor skills. Yep, That's exactly agreed. One. Yep. Um, so, so that way you're still introducing your kid. Number two, talk about smart devices for what they are. A tool, not a way of life. And that starts with you as a parent, right? Yep. That starts with everyone as a parent. What, what, what's that mean? It means um, if, you're, if you're at the dinner table and you've got your phone um, and your kid sees that, they're going to take that as uh, acceptable behavior. So we have to be better as parents, right? And I know that's hard and we all have work and, you know, you're taking care of your kids. You leave work at 4 p.m. so you can go take care of your kid, get him out of, you know, daycare or whatever and bring him home. And, you know, you're trying to feed your kid, at you know, an early dinner before their bath and your boss is emailing you or texting you and you want to answer them and you want to you have to deal with the pressures of life. We got to take all that into consideration. And I do. I don't want to seem like what you're saying, James, is unrealistic. But at the same time, um, your boss could wait an hour. There's literally nothing. Very few things in this world are time sensitive to that minute. 
You're right. You're absolutely right. And Very um, few things. Those takeaways are critical for our people to hear, both watching us live today, and thank you for doing so, and for our podcast listeners. Um, this is The Other Side of Cyber with James Books. Azar and Books. Jacqueline and Jane. Me. Books. What else Books. did you have? Books. Read books. 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 Takeaways. Books. Puzzles. Now order books. Puzzles. Games. Yes. All Out of the doors. cool things. They're the, yeah. But that's the balance. Adults should be doing that too, can I just say? Yeah, I mean, that's that's something very interesting. I think the idea of um, in my household, we have um, three TVs and only one of them is plugged in. Like I have two TVs that are just not plugged in. They're just here. I don't know why. I've tried to sell them. No one you wants collect- them. You collect technology, you know, let me, how many screens, geez, I wouldn't want to know. And then you buy the computer screen that also does TV. And yeah, I think we're moving away from being hyper-connected. I think the conversation is really important. And I know that we will be continuing this week, uh, this episode next week in episode 10 of The Other Side of Cyber, where we will talk about the primary school years. Um, so when the kids actually do come into school, even kindergarten. So to what what should they be doing and, and what things do we need to really be aware of as parents? And probably some challenging conversations of what really should they be doing and what shouldn't they be doing. But for now, we're going to say thank you to our podcast listeners. Uh, please make sure you subscribe. Don't miss out. And as James says, give us five stars because that helps in all of the algorithms that happen to keep us up the top. And we will continue this awesome conversation with our live audience. So we take a two-second break and we're back. And there's Fergus again. Fergus McFuzzy Pants. The cat appearance. Um, Sylvana so says kids are sponges. And I... Yep. I really do agree with that. Kids are not only sponges, but especially in the toddler years as they're kind of, you know, it's very interesting because you see that clear difference between small to large families. So I have friends who have, um, my sister's got five kids. And when um, the oldest was born and he was on his own, he was very different than as his brothers and sisters came along. Right. And now I look at the little one who's like nine months old. Right. And I'm just like, that kid's super smart, but that kid's a sponge. She's learning from her older brothers and sister. She's constantly observing. Her eyes are wide open to the world. Right. And she's beating the the development curve because of that, because she's surrounded by these people 24 7. And the same applies when we look at technology, right? Um, I'm guilty of that with my first kid. Sticking him in front of the TV. Like, ah, I got to do stuff. Um, Here you go. Watch Barney or Sesame Street. And and that's not always uh, the that's not the right approach. I'd, I'd call it the lazy approach, but I've been a victim of it myself. I'm very critical of myself for that. But we didn't necessarily know. It's like um, um, parents who gave orange juice in bottles to their kids for years and it was only after a certain amount of time that the dentists gave all the reports to say these young kids, their adult teeth are falling out and we've linked it back to the, the amount of cordial or orange juice that parents were giving them in a bottle. Don't do that anymore. But for the 20 years it took to get to that report, it was happening. So awareness needs to shift behaviour. And the behaviour element takes time. That's about culture. And that's where we see the parent who makes a physical effort to turn off the phone, turn off the sound, put it face down and actually engage with their kids. They're saying, this is the way we do things. If Sunday afternoon is a reading, you know, three hours, everyone's reading a book. If the kids see the parents do that, that's what they'll do. If the parents exercise a lot, guess what? So will the kids. It's monkey see, monkey do. And in the last however many years we've been connected like we are, we love the internet too. We love all the beautiful things that technology has brought us, but we're adults. Our brains can actually function better because we grew up without it. These kids are growing up in it 
and therein lies the issue. They actually have not seen or experienced enough of the non-connected world like we did growing up, James, and that's the, the issue we have. We're not going to take it away. We can't, but it's bringing awareness to say what can we do now because if we don't, I think we're going to have a big problem in, in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Big problem. So I agree. We're gonna have we're gonna have extreme challenges yep. if we don't talk about it. And I think uh, it, with toddlers, um, drawing lines and rules is very critical for their development because Absolutely. they're always testing it, and Absolutely. they have the patience, and they also have the means to drive us insane. They cry, they scream, they to they throw temper tantrums, and then they act super freaking cute. And all you want to do is bite them and uh, hug them and kiss them. And give them what they and, want. And give them what they want. And yeah. so um, there comes a time where you kind of have to draw those, those, those lines in the sand and say, listen, that's a very good thing that you're saying there, kiddo. But bottom line is we need you to do more, right? Yeah. We, we need you to be more effective. And but so it's also – Parents have more on their plate. You brought it up, James. Parents have more on their plate. So they need to actually say, hold on a minute, my boss can wait for the next three hours or whatever it is, no connections as far as internet goes. I'm, I'm focused as a parent. That's hard to do these days. If we need to do it. It's hard to do it. Yeah, it's it's hard to do it. It's also, um, you know, everything in the house, you know, is smart and so, you know, Dim light, turn on, uh, Alexa, play uh, jazz, you know, all these different things. And um, they create some real challenges. And I think that's uh, that's really significant um, um, for a lot of parents. And we don't want to dismiss it because there's a lot of single parents out there too. Yep. Well, and I'm one of those. And there were times when I needed that iPad. Let me tell you, I needed yeah. it. For your sanity. For, yeah. If nothing else for your sanity. Yep. But then I think, hold on a minute. So I'm not being harsh on myself because, you know, I did my best as we all parents do. Um, what would happen if it was 30 years ago? What would I have done then? What would the difference have been? You know what it is? I'll tell you what it would have been. Community efforts. It's community Correct. efforts 30 years ago were much greater than they are today. And I think that's something that as you're, you know, um, as, as you're becoming a parent, as you're exploring having kids, um, don't just look for the best schools, look for the best community. Sometimes a school that's a B school, but has a strong community is better than an A school with a disjointed community. Because where you can rely on people to help you where you know, if especially if you're a single parent or especially if you're um, parents who are working in young organizations or you have your own business and you're you're having to work them on, you, you can um, send them to your next door neighbor. Yeah, uh, Silvana's just sent them to their auntie. Yeah. Down the street. Absolutely, Silvana. You know, and James, I'm so I'm not surprised at all you said that. It's one of the reasons why you're a bloody good person. Is and that is what we're missing is community. Um, there's we used to like 30 years ago, it was different. You could say pop over to the neighbors or the kids would be together playing somewhere, or there was that sense of community where the, you did have that outlet. These days, whilst it's coming back a little bit, no doubt, COVID has changed a lot of our behaviors and people are realizing the importance of family and connection you know games night at home holidaying close by um, the world has changed and for the better um, in many ways and I'm very unfortunate for the negative side of COVID but from a, a cultural point of view and the way we live day to day I think for the better in many ways so to know that there is that community makes a big big difference but everybody like there's not like you haven't got friends i have friends but they're in the same situation i'm in they're busy too they're overrun with everything they need to do our worlds are too full and to just not even not dumb it down it's not the right term simplify things for the sake of our kids we sacrifice a lot as parents anyway so why don't we really sacrifice 
that opportunity to be online or connected for the sake of our kids' mental health and just their experience in life. I think we owe it to them. Um, I love what you just said. I agree completely with what you said. And this is why I think if there's one negative from COVID, from a child development point of view, and some people may not like what I have to say right now. So no, we don't want to please everybody. Trigger warning. I have friends who have not let their kids see anyone for a year now because they're concerned about the kid contracting COVID, bringing it home. People who are paranoid about COVID. Yep. COVID has created a level of paranoia. And what it's done is it's, it's, it's moved us into, while we do understand and value families for a lot of people, it's become a, um, you know, Jewish Passover is this Saturday. How is that? From a COVID perspective, is it being so last year? So, so last year we did Zoom Passover, a Zoom Seder, a Zoom over. It was a Zoom Seder. It was, um, everyone kind of was at home and everyone made, um, kind of their own food and everyone put a laptop up and joined the Zoom and they kind of read the, the, the story of the uh, Exodus out of Egypt, the Haggadah. And, um, and that was that. So and what's happening year, this year? I'm hosting. I've got oh. 10 people coming over. I ain't playing around. So where's my I'm invite? Not, I'm not paranoid about I've, as someone who's had COVID twice. Let me tell you folks. Yeah, it sucks, but it's just a bad flu. If you're healthy. Now, if you've got pre-existing conditions, please act responsibly. If you're elderly, Please act responsibly. If you take care of people who are elderly, please act responsibly. However, if you're young, you don't interact with the elderly. You don't interact with anyone um, who's um, at risk for COVID. Live your full life to the fullest extent possible. Yep. And with the vaccines now, you don't need to mask up once you're vaccinated. Yep. You don't need to mask up. Well, no interesting it. here, they're saying to mask up. We've got to be careful with our COVID words for this YouTube because they might not like it. Yeah, the idea of masking up after you get a vaccine where it stops 98% of the spread and infection of COVID is very fascinating to me. You know, I was just thinking um, what you said, James, about the paranoia. I wonder if that is also, um, I see Sylvana's message, your cat. Uh, yeah, gorgeous. That's Fergus McFuzzy Pants, Silvana. If you're lucky, he'll give you a nice face shot or a butt shot. He likes to do that too. He's coming back. He heard you talk. No, nope, he's not. Um, over here, not so paranoid because we're, it's very different in Australia. We've got very low rates. Um, in Like I'm travelling at the moment. Yes, I've got to wear a mask, which I cannot stand, but I'm doing it because we have to. We're scanning ourselves in everywhere. Um, and we're doing really well as, an, as a country. And I don't know if there's the same level of paranoia. I might be wrong, but I've not experienced it much here. I wonder if because America has different rates and they had a, a pretty terrible time of it um, up until now. Negative. Or do you think it's just uh, paranoia? I think it's paranoia. Um, and I don't okay. want to get into the COVID conversation. Um, YouTube has not been very friendly to us no. when we run stuff around COVID. No. Um, and... Um, so well, let's channel. talk about what you're doing this year for Passover. So it's at your house. Our house, we're having people come over, friends. Um, yep. And, and um, we don't have a lot of family in our area, so a lot of friends coming over. And um, we're just going to do a normal Seder dinner. But, you know, there'll be no um, connectivity. There'll be no internet stuff. It no. Just so, that's the, so, so, that's very, so that's something very interesting about um, um, Judaism. So, you know, I, I always talk about my uh, – 25 hour digital break every Friday to Saturday yeah. for Shabbat. And so on Passover this year, it's, it's actually really fascinating. So because it's Saturday night, I turn off all my devices on Friday. Wow. And Saturday night we start the holiday and the holiday, because we're not in Israel and in the States, we go two days. 
So Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Wow. So I get to go pretty much. I can't go internet free for that long because of work and, and, and Monday I'm broadcasting and all that good stuff, but I'll be without internet probably for, for close to 36, 38 hours. That's awesome. Yeah. No digital devices. Um, all the stories we read are on paper and books and, um, we'll have music in the background, just yeah. kind of drying out a little bit and, um, lots of wine. I think we're it's actually, look, it's, we're I actually, think we're, uh, you go, sorry. We're actually ordered to drink four glasses of wine. Okay. Big Saturday. glasses. Uh, four glasses. The, the recommended size is around six ounces a glass. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's half a bottle. There's a, an opportunity, I think, with um, the world we're in right now, and the opportunity we have is to become more analog, um, get off the tech and talk about the tech while we're not on it, um, educate parents, especially as we were talking before about the toddlers. Um, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who, when it comes to, is it celebrating Passover? I don't want to get the wrong terminology. Is it a celebration or is it an observing? Because they're two different things. James, are we observing Passover or celebrating? We observe and celebrate it simultaneously. Okay. So, so there will be families all over the world of which there will be parents who give devices to their kids over the time to say here, over there in the corner, um, because that's the nature of what we do now. Whereas we need to get to the point of, okay, no technology. This is the way we need to go about all of our celebrations or observations, things that are important to us. We need to really take a good look and think, okay, no TV, nothing. Let's put music on and have a conversation or God forbid, sit in silence. You know how hard that is for kids these days to so, see in silence. I got, I got my haircut yesterday, and at one and my barber, who's an unbelievable guy, Jack and Sons Barber Shop in uh, in uh, Johns Creek, Roswell, and Alpha in uh, in Cumming is just the bomb place to go. Give him a shout out because Narek deserves it. Um, Excellent. He had me at his house to get a haircut because it was his day off, but I needed a haircut, and he was fully booked um today tomorrow and friday and so i was like dude i need a haircut otherwise i now go eight weeks without cutting my hair because after passover we start a count um, seven weeks which is the seven weeks the israelites went in the desert before they reached the mountain and they got the torah from uh from god and so in those seven weeks in those 49 days we don't shave or cut our hair because the israelites didn't do that they were walking in the desert so no barbers around there well one and number two they didn't have a chance to stop and really pamper they were just walking and getting to the point where god descended onto the mountain with moses and and, and gave out the torah now we're turning into a torah lesson but that's that's, that's always, i love learning the new things james it's awesome it's awesome but it's a really fun um little kind of story so he he brought me to his house yesterday and there was one point where we just silently stood there and we were watching a movie on on the tv as he was cutting my hair and we just we were silent for like 15 minutes and we both had just started laughing and i've known my barber for several years now and we're, we're good friends beyond the fact that he's just my barber um we we play basketball once a week together we hang out we go to the same shul and so um we we kind of laughed it off because you know we were silent for like 15 minutes and we, we kind of brought that up to how we both talk a lot in our job. <laughs> you know, I host oh. a podcast and I do a lot of conference calls and, and whatnot that we value those moments of silence. And yesterday we just sat there and had a moment of silence for 15 minutes. It was brilliant. Yeah. It's just what we needed. You need it. And the other thing is also the board, we'll talk about this when we get to the teenage areas or the just primary school kids too, with the I'm bored. And I remember when I used to say that, my mum would say, that's your problem. 
<laughs> that's not my problem. And it was, oh, okay, so I would go find something to do. Whereas the boredom is actually critical. Boredom is where the ideas come from. It's where the imagination runs wild. It's when you can sit with yourself and really contemplate your navel, as we used to say, and which is just really looking inwards and thinking about life. And you don't realise you're doing it. But if you've, if you've got things being pushed at you all the time, you don't have an opportunity to actually stop and think and listen to yourself thinking. It's interesting that, and I, I haven't seen any reports on it, so this is just an opinion, that behavioural issues, attention issues, have been exacerbated over the years. Is that to also do with technology? That we're not letting the brains of our young children develop in the way they're naturally supposed to develop. Technologies come in and literally bombarded their development. Um, and we're only just starting to see the negative repercussions of that. Whilst there are also positive, the general consensus is it's more negative than positive at this moment. So, yeah, it's uh, there's no answer. Um, there is just managing it. It's like social engineering. We're here to manage the ongoing problem of social engineering. We'll never fix it. Just like this with how do we become a, or be parents um, in the digital world, and bring our kids up as good, connected citizens where they're not doing the wrong thing, behaving in the wrong way, or uploading stuff on the internet that they can never really get rid of that's going to haunt them for the rest of their lives. Because James and I don't have any evidence of our teenage years on the internet. Hee <laughs> Which is yes, good. That is very true. We are at the end of our show, JJ. Can you believe it? Well, we could literally talk for days, but, you know, we'll be back. Yeah, we will be. We'll be back next week. We'll yeah. be still in the midst of Passover. Passover is celebrated for seven days. So I'll share how our Passover dinner went. Maybe share Excellent. some pictures of all the, great food, all the great food my wife and our friends are going to be making. My wife is going to be making some of her most delicious food ever. And she's just, oh. uh, she makes this very spicy fish that's just. Well, maybe one year when I can travel, I can come over and celebrate this with you and your you family. You are welcome whenever you want. We love having people over for Seder. It is the best time of the year. It'd and hopefully be, next year, you know, people will be traveling again. And yeah, it'd be good. That's for indeed. sure. Now, are you, will you be joining us on Clubhouse on Monday night, James? I will be. I will be. Um, the beauty of this holiday specifically is it landed on a Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday. So um, Saturday, Sunday, and and I think uh, the following week may be Monday, but I have to double check that. Fabulous. So for all our wonderful viewers and listeners, um, wherever you may be, you can catch us every Wednesday here on the other side of cyber. And you can also catch us every Monday night, Australian time. I think we're 10 p.m. Sydney time on Clubhouse, where it's the other side of cyber unplugged, where we'll be continuing this conversation, that's for sure. And listening to all the, um, what would you call them? The extreme one end of um, the ledger to the other with people on Clubhouse. It's really quite Indeed. amazing. Yes. Indeed. Don't forget to subscribe, to continue to follow us, to please share with your friends, your family, anyone in cyber or not. As you probably worked out, it's not all technical. It is about the other side of cyber, that human element. Um, so make sure you do follow us. We'll, our podcast will be out on all the podcast areas um, next week. And I'm sure we'll have a social media post to support that so you can follow it. Am I missing anything, James? Not at all, folks. Enjoy the rest of your evening for all of those over on the other side of the world. Um, for those who may have been watching us from the U.S., because uh, the time difference, we're an hour later, which puts us at 5 a.m. here. Now it's almost 6. Some people wake up that early and have been tuning in, in fact. So for those people, um, have a great rest of your day. Folks, thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you.